Transfigured on the Mount, O Christ our God. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Be Transfigured, where we invite you to live a new life in Christ. We pray that this episode is a blessing to you and will inspire you to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. We invite you to join us for worship or study at the St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Cathedral in Tarpon Springs, Florida, where visitors are always welcome. We'll be back in a few moments to share some more information about our ministry. I get tired of saying this, but this is one of my favorite passages. <laughs> And I mean, because every passage is one of my favorite passages. But I think this particular passage, my brothers and sisters, in our preparation, our final days before Christmas, this particular reading, I think, gives us a special insight into God's love. Of course, it is an ancient, ancient, ancient custom to reflect and to recall ancestry long before there was ever any written books generations would pass down the stories of their ancestors to their children and to their children's children so this particular custom is as ancient as humanity itself even we here in Tarpon Springs I've been here for a little over four years every time we I meet someone new and believe it or not I'm still meeting people new after four years immediately the conversation goes into a family history my papu came over on a sponge boat in this year or my yaya did this and always people are sharing with me family history and it's such a blessing for me as a priest to be able to be allowed into your family in this way but even that is not why this gospel is so special to me because when we think of our ancestors, right, our own personal ancestors, there might be some people we'd rather not remember, right? I think we probably all have maybe one black sheep in the family. Maybe we're the black sheep in the family, I don't know, but this is not a confession time. But when we think of our own family, we realize that in our own family history, there are people that we could say are good, and there are people that are not so good. There are people that have been faithful, and there are people that have not been so faithful. But they're still our family. We cannot ever lose sight of the fact that whether we like how they live their life or whether they like how we live our life, we are still family. And we are still bound to each other in that bloodline of ancestry. And so this now is gets to the heart of why this particular gospel is so important for me as we prepare to celebrate Christmas. Because we are hearing of the earthly ancestors of Christ in this case from Abraham later this week we're gonna go back even further to hear the ancestry of Christ but today we heard this long litany of names and I spared you to hearing it in both languages because it is a long list but in that list of names if we have the opportunity this week, I encourage you, go home, open up the Old Testament. You know, it's the book before the New Testament. It, it's the thicker of the two. It starts with Genesis, goes through Exodus. And in the Old Testament, you're going to read the lives of every one of these people who was mentioned in this morning's gospel. And what are you going to find? Some people lived good lives. Some people lived not so good lives. Some people were faithful to God. Other people were not so faithful to God. Exactly as we are. And yet, 
they are the ancestors of God and when we were baptized and joined to Jesus Christ they became our ancestors Abraham, Isaac, David, etc. And so it makes me realize just how much God loves us. You see, going all the way back to the first book in Genesis, God has, when He created humanity, He interacted with them and He had a relationship with Adam and Eve in the garden. From the very first day of life, God had a relationship with our ancestors. Even after Eve disobeyed God, and we have what we call the fall of humanity, God never stopped having a relationship with Adam and Eve. And from that moment, He set into motion knowing that Christ was going to be incarnate some thousands years later. The entire story of the Old Testament is present in this morning's gospel. Because what we see here, what we hear in the words of the scriptures, is God has remained faithful to us. I'll give you one very simple example. David the king. Now, first of all, even before David the king, we have the Jewish people, the people of God, living in the fallen world, just like we do, falling to the temptation, turned to God and demanded, demanded an earthly king. God says, trust me, you don't want an earthly king. I'm paraphrasing now. The earthly kings don't always work out so good. They demanded so God gave them David. David was a murderer and an adulterer. And yet, in his repentance, in when he realized that God never abandoned him, when he realized that God had a relationship with him also, in his repentance, he gave us the book of Psalms. Beautiful hymns of love and repentance and hope. The gospel this morning as one of the benchmarks of this lineage, this history, mentions that the Jews were sent off to Babylon, the deportation. Now we Greeks know a little bit about displaced people, don't we? We have ancestors, many of us, because of other empires in the world that were displaced. They were sent away. They were deported. And I imagine that the Jews thought to themselves, where's God? Has God abandoned us? Has God left us alone? Here we are being sent off to Babylon. Where's God in all of this? And yet, he never abandoned them. I know in my conversations with people in our community and in other communities, it's not unique to our family here, that sense of feeling that God has forgotten us is very easy to come by. Because we find ourselves sometimes in a predicament in life. Take, for example, the current pandemic. And we, every single day in this church, we have been praying for the end of the pandemic. And here it is now, nine months later, whatever it is, and it is still raging out in the world, in our very own backyard, in our very own parish family. And it gets very tempting to wonder, where's God in all of this? Why hasn't God stopped this pandemic? The simple answer is we really don't know why he hasn't stopped it. But he's never walked away from us. As he did with every person in this morning's gospel, God has never left our side. 
in the good days and in the really horrible days when we feel the real pain of life God has been right there holding our hand because he knows better than we do what Christmas really means he knows that because he became one of us all of our pain and suffering is temporary he knows better than we do that we have a greater life coming and I don't mean a greater earthly life we may or may not have earthly blessings in the future but what is guaranteed by God in this morning's gospel in the way this is offered to us is that whether we have good days or bad days God is there and he's going to rescue us hopefully we don't have to wait another 14 generations as it says in the gospel but no matter how long it takes never give up hope never accept that we are alone on the earth because when Christ was born what does it say they shall call his name Emmanuel God is with us Methimonotheos and for that and because of that we have the strength to endure anything our ancestors have put up with and anything that the future holds for us because as the celebration of Christmas makes crystal clear God is with us for all eternity I pray that we have a blessed Christmas this year it's going to be a little different we know but don't allow those differences this year because of the pandemic distract you from the blessed realization Mephimonotheos God is with us glory to God for all things as far as they could bear it be Transfigured is a production of Be Transfigured Ministries in cooperation with the St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Cathedral in Tarpon Springs, Florida. We depend upon your generosity to maintain our ministry. You can make a safe online donation when you visit our website, liveanewlifeinchrist.org.